observations with Robert Meyer Burnett. What is a Marvel picture? A Marvel picture is one prototype movie that is made over and over and over and over and over again to look different. Even the talented people, you could take Dune, made by Denis Villeneuve, an extremely talented, gifted artist, and you could take No Time to Die, directed by Kerry Fukunaga, extremely gifted, talented, beautiful artists, and you could take both of those movies, and you and I could go and pull the same sequences out of both of them and put them together. The same sequence where all the cars have to crash into each other, they all have that stuff in it, and they almost all have to have it if they're going to justify their budget. And that's the good films and the talented filmmakers. So that was the quote that was going around fan circles over the last five days, talking about how, once again, Francis Ford Coppola, like Martin Scorsese, and like, say, Roland Emmerich, or, or older school filmmakers that are going after Marvel films. But I kind of, uh, full disclosure, as you all know, I love the MCU, I love superhero movies, I always have. But full disclosure, I understand what they're saying. Because as you all know, um, you know, I'm always banging on about Michelangelo Los Antonioni, uh, Michelangelo Antonioni's Ennui trilogy, uh, La Notte, La Ventura, and The Eclipse, or I talk about my love of Tarkovsky movies, whether it's The Mirror or Nostalgia or Stalker or Solaris, or, you know, going back to Truffaut and Godard, I mean, whether you're talking about A, um, a Band Apart or The 400 Blows, or even other movies like last year, Mary and Bad. There's a lot of movies that I own that I love that no one that I usually speak to on these streams. Now, that doesn't mean all of you. I'm not saying none of you are going to watch these things. But when was the last time, if ever, you watched any of Antonioni's movies? They did a 4K restoration of Red Desert. Uh, Monica Vitti's in that. It was it was Antonioni's first color movie. How many of you are excited to go see that? I mean, Criterion put out Red Desert. But hey, are you going to buy that 4K disc? So there's a lot of movies out there, and I'm not, this is not a criticism of you, the audience. I'm just saying that movies, for the most part, the way we look at them, they're, it's populist entertainment. And even I will admit, I mean, as much as I love, say, Fellini movies, or, I mean, take your pick, um, they're, they're not to everyone's taste today. And as I, I, I've all, I often said, to watch certain kinds of movies, you actually have to train yourself to do it. And I did. When I was a little kid, not a little kid, but starting uh, at 12 years old, I would go to the Seattle International Film Festival, and I watched movies from around the world, tons of films. And a lot of those movies were not necessarily my speed, nor was I that interested in them. And I actually, it was more of a, I guess, a zen exercise. I would, I would sit down and I'd realize, okay... These movies are only going to be 90 minutes to two hours. So sometimes when the movies were either off-putting to me or I find I found myself very disinterested in them, I just sat back and in, in sort of, a, uh, I guess, a moment of centered zen, I would be like, okay, I'm going to watch this movie because it's only going to be two hours of my time. Why don't I try and give myself over to it? Sometimes it was harder than others. But that's what I learned to do. And it was very gratifying at the end of the day because I got to see a lot of movies I normally would never have go gone to see, but I learned a lot, I experienced a lot, and I, I um, certainly from during my high school, junior high and high school years, you know, 12 to 18, every year when SIF would come around, the Seattle International Film Festival, I would, I would get to see these movies and I had put myself in a mindset where it allowed me to watch them, no matter what they were, and sometimes they tried my patience. But I was able to get through them all, and it was a much more gratifying experience going into the, these movies with that uh, in mind. Now, I think what all these filmmakers are saying is not necessarily, even though Scorsese used the words or whatever, they're not cinema. In a way, uh, it's the difference between reading a lot of genre literature or reading the classics. And I understand that. You know, I love pot boilers or airport reads. You know, give me a good thriller novel that I can read on a transatlantic flight or a cross-country flight. I can bang it out in five hours. I'm all for that. But if that's all you read, then you're shortchanging your own intellect because you're only seeing the world in a certain way. And I think, look, I love Marvel movies. I love stories about heroes and villains. And I see the Marvel superhero films as sort of another example of a cop thriller or a lawyer a lawyer movie no one's going to make paul newman 
in the verdict anymore. The studios aren't going to do that. You'd see that as a 10 episode show on Netflix. And I, it might be great, but I love the verdict. I saw the verdict in the theater. I was blown away by it. Sidney Lumet's 1982 movie about an alcoholic lawyer taking on one last case, looking for redemption. I love that movie. I love the way it was shot. I love everything about it. No studio would make that movie today. Much less, if they did make it, they wouldn't put it in a theater. They'd send it directly to streaming. And and yet, it is a film, a profound movie, about how one doesn't give up. It's about underdogs. It's also about uh, what it means to be washed up and, and, and go for that final shot at redemption. And about that. There's a, about a lot more other things, too. But it, it's a film that just wouldn't get made today because movies are a collision of art and commerce. And there's no more commerce involving the movie The Verdict anymore beyond the Blu-ray that I bought. So I get where Coppola is coming from. That studio-produced movies all must be, by definition, some kind of event film. It's got to be very transportive, whether you're watching Free Guy or Thor Love and Thunder. You need to be taken away. It's got to be like you're going to the amusement park and you're going to be thrilled uh, by what you're going to see on the screen. No longer would anyone make a quiet movie like The Verdict and put it in a giant theater. Nobody would go see it just because our culture has changed and it's shifted. And I think that a lot of this has happened because of social media. Our attention spans are, are the way we consume things. No one knows how. To, as a matter of fact, the very idea that you have your black mirror with you all the time um, and you're carrying it around with you. It means that even when you're sitting down and you're watching something, if you're not completely absorbed in it, you're thinking about your phone even when you're not looking at it. And it's not necessarily the phone that you're thinking about. It's all the input that it brings you. Text messages from friends, emails, TikTok videos, whatever the hell it is, your, your, your phone is giving you or your screens or your tablets or whatever. Call it what you want. But you're, you're, when you're not getting this um, initial blast of information, it's really even hard to focus on a movie like The Verdict unless you've trained yourself to do so because you can't, you can't focus because you know that there's other information out there that you think you need to know. So people don't even know how to watch movies other than spectacle films now. They can't do it. Um, and it's, it's unfortunate. But anyway, anyway, right now, the whole motion picture business, indeed the whole entertainment business, is going through a massive sea change in the sense that streaming services, studios, they don't know what to do. You know, they'll, well, uh, we have to make IP. And yet I'm talking to you right now on this. If you're watching the show or listening to this as the podcast version of the show, that means you're spending two hours of time or however long I'm going to go on for tonight listening to me instead of watching a studio picture or or a streaming show and it was very cheap to produce this <laughs> this piece of entertainment you're watching now me talking to you the world has changed movies used to be sort of in the 20th century i've often said that the 20th century movies were the art form of that century it was a combination of all the previous art forms with the added benefit of technology and it created a frothy mix of dreams writ large on the big screen that we could all sit down in, in giant theaters to watch. And it was something that didn't exist before. And the 20th century gave rise to movies and everyone loves movies. But the 21st century is not the century of movies anymore. All art forms ebb and flow and peak. But these narratives, we're always going to like them. But there are other things, whether it's gaming, whether it's the internet, whether it's TikTok videos, there's all kinds of things now competing or, or long-form streaming shows, which have more, I think, more, uh, uh, they're more like reading a great novel than they are watching a movie because it takes a lot longer to see them all. But the entertainment landscape has changed, and everybody's trying to figure out how to do it. And Coppola's dreams of being a maverick, they're realized. You get a decent camera phone, you have some talent, you can actually shoot a movie that looks like a Hollywood production. That doesn't mean you're not going to have to do a lot of post-production to make it finished and sound great. But you could literally make a movie for a couple of grand in equipment costs and make a film that could rival any Hollywood Studios movies if you know how to work the software and if you have talented people. You still need to have people that know how to record sound and shoot. But the means of production, anyone can get to them. 
and with things like well Vimeo and throwing stuff up on Amazon or or YouTube whatever your movies can get out to the world there is no longer a pipeline I mean obviously we all want to work for Hollywood if you're trying to make movies but you don't have to do that anymore it just depends what is it you want out of life if you're a true artist and you want to just make your own films you can do that now if you want to become famous even movie stars aren't as famous as they used to be but if it's all about the work you can make the work happen the dream that coppola had and all those maverick filmmakers that went to san francisco had that dream is here thing is it's really hard no matter what to make movies you need talented people who really know what they're doing and that talent um it doesn't matter what kind of a person you are it doesn't matter what color you are it doesn't matter your sexuality all movies require talent to make them and they're all kind of made the same way and you can learn how 